Okay, now that we've got our basic emitter in there as well as our liquid node, we can go ahead and begin working on our collisions, specifically the collisions with the bottle and the glass. So adding a collider for collisions is actually very easy. All we need to do is actually select our liquid node here and shift select the object we're going to collide with. We're going to start with the bottle. So I'm going to come up here to Bifrost and just hit Collider. And you'll notice that immediately the shape of the liquid changes a bit. It's actually gotten a little bit smaller. That's because part of that liquid was actually inside of the wall of the bottle. It was intersecting a little bit. So it just clipped that away for us so that we don't have any unnecessary particles just stuck inside of our collider. So if I go ahead and hit play now, we should see that it begins at least somewhat respecting the bottle. Let's go ahead and hit play. Give that just a moment and we'll kind of scrub back to it now. Let's see. And we could see that it does obey the bottle. It stays in there you know, and it's functioning doesn't necessarily look like it's behaving the way a small sized liquid would, but we knew that wouldn't be the case. We could also see it's penetrating the bottle a bit right there. But again, also not a big issue right now. We're just worried about setting up those basic collisions. All right, so the collisions with this are working. Now, I'm going to go ahead and stop this Bifrost simulation. Now, this part is actually cut off in my view. However, if you actually just drop down below this little running man a little bit, in the bottom right hand corner is going to be a little stop button and you'll see Bifrost is counting down next to it. I'm going to go ahead and click that button and that just kills this right here. So it doesn't have to continue solving. Okay, so this collider is working. However, before we go ahead and move on to our next collider, let's take a look at the properties that come with this collider. Just like the emitter had its own node, the collider has its own node as well here. So let's go ahead and bring up the attribute editor for this. Go to the collider properties. And you can see it's actually almost identical to the emitter node, at least up here at the top. Again, don't touch the mesh property. If you want to enable or disable this, you can just click right here. Uh, mode, again, if this was not a solid object, if this was an open object, like again, a flat plane, or if I had cut this uh, uh, bottle open in some area where basically the inside of the faces were exposed, we would want to use shell. Again, we're in a situation where it's a completely closed mesh, so solid should work fine. Um, this is one where perhaps later on, you know, I might need this solid robust uh, collision. However, I'm not going to bother with that until it's absolutely necessary. Now, when we come down here, there's also something called boundary controls. We're not going to go ahead and deal with this right now. We might discuss this a little bit later. Let's go ahead now and drop down to collision. And you'll notice there's only one option here. It's called adaptivity and it's called refine nearby fluids. One thing you're going to see quite a bit of as we delve further into Bifrost is everything in Bifrost is set up and designed to become more and more efficient, basically to cut corners. Uh, the reason is that Bifrost is, again, as we've discussed, designed to handle huge, huge, large scale simulations where every droplet isn't necessarily important. So it'll try to cut out any calculation that's not necessary. So what's happening right now is it's basically telling us it's really only trying to affect the fluids that are near the collider. So basically it would just affect these fluids right here. Now, this may become an issue for us later because, quite frankly, it's a very small space and I'm trying to get a very accurate simulation. So I may want this collider to affect every little particle in here. But for right now, I'll go ahead and leave this on and we'll go ahead and deal with it uh, if it becomes an issue later. So with that on, um, let's go ahead and add our second collider, which is going to be our glass. I'm going to go ahead and select the Bifrost node. We'll select the glass and then we'll come up here to Bifrost and we'll add yet another collider. We can go to the collider settings already right over here. Collider properties and just as with the other one, there's probably nothing I really need to change in here right now. But if you did need to make changes, you would come and typically make them straight away right now. For example, if this wasn't a complete solid shell or excuse me, a, a solid, we would want to switch it to shell over here. Now, as we get more and more objects in our scene, it's going to become a little complicated over here. We have two colliders, so I'm going to change this already to collider bottle. 
and Collider Glass, just so that I know which one is which. Okay, so um, we could try to do a test right now, but what we're probably going to run into is the fact that the wine probably isn't going to pour out of the bottle. Uh, let's go give it a, a go just in case. So I'll select this here, tap rewind, hit play. We'll let this simulate out, and let's see if any of that wine actually begins to pour into the glass. Now, as we actually just kind of watch this here, we'll see that... Um, there's something a little strange going on, especially as we start to get near the neck of the bottle. Very little of the liquid is actually going through that neck of the bottle. You can see it's actually getting kind of stuck in there. So the reason is that right now the resolution is too low. Those voxels or those grid squares that we saw uh, in the last module, you know, they're larger for the most part, or maybe roughly the size of the neck of the bottle, so many of these actually can't make it through. Now it looks like some are making it, so I'm just going to see if any happen to be able to pour out of the bottle, just to make sure it is reading my object as a collider. However, obviously as it is right now, none of this is really going to work for us as is. But let's see. Yeah, we might get one particle out of there, and honestly it doesn't look like we're going to get very much pouring out of there at all. So before we can really test this glass, chances are we need to go in and at least address the master voxel size. We may also want to go in and actually address the look of our particles as well, because they're actually a little difficult to see right now. So I'm going to go ahead and end this clip here, and in the next one we're going to go ahead and address those two problems.